Good evening, everyone. We've got some tough acts to follow. It's been great. Thank you all for uh, for hosting all of us and staying around. I'm going to talk tonight a little more about ocean data. Gary started off a really nice way talking to us about what is available in Monterey Bay and the amazing work that's going on in Monterey Bay. I grew up doing a lot of sailing, a lot of surfing, and spending a lot of time around the water. And one thing that does for you, as Jay certainly has taught all of us, is that it really gives you an innate appreciation for the water and what the water can do for you. But it also teaches you the danger of water the joy of water, and many other things that can be experienced. But a big part of that that we don't realize is ocean data that comes from all around us. Daily, we look on our smartphones and check the tides, we check waves, we check everything else, but how often do we really dig into where that data comes from? Well, for the past 20 years, I've been studying ocean sciences and really looking at where it comes from deploying buoys that measure waves, deploying subsea systems that measure currents in a thousand meters of water. There's some pretty mind-blowing stuff going on in the ocean out there. And Gary showed a few of the things that Ambari is doing that, that really is just cutting edge. You know, one of the big challenges is that it's expensive. It's really freaking expensive to get gear out there. It's really complex to get gear out there. One example is that data well buoy up there. That's the basis for 99% of the wave measurements that you look at any time you look at wave data. Whether it's Hurricane Irma that's coming in and seeing the 20-foot waves that were coming in towards Puerto Rico, I mean, that's huge. If anyone's ever been to the Caribbean, can you imagine 20-foot waves? Not a big deal offshore here in the Pacific. We get that all the time. 20-foot waves in the Caribbean, that's massive. There's one buoy out there measuring that telling those people what's coming. It's because that buoy right there costs about $100,000. A cheap one's on order of $50,000. And that boat right there that's deploying it costs about $15,000 to $20,000 a day on the water. Now, if you're going out into the open ocean, let's look in the Pacific. Let's see where some of these buoys are. Well, that's Ocean Station Papa out there. That's a buoy off of Coos Bay out there. There's some buoys around Hawaii. What do you see out here? Nothing. You're talking millions of dollars, millions of dollars to get buoys out there. It is really complicated to get buoys out in the water to measure ocean data. Well, I've been doing this for a while and looking at different types of technology and thinking, my God, you know, on our cell phones, we actually have technology that's just as complicated as what's going into those buoys. Frankly, most of those buoys were designed in the 1970s. It's the exact same technology. But off the shelf today, we have amazing stuff that can get out there. So I started playing around with electronics on a bench top, collaborated with some other folks, and we created the wave spot. We got some funding from the Department of Energy in support of marine renewable energy in the form of wave power, and created the spotter, wrote a molded hole, pretty simple GPS technology, iridium uplinks, $5,000. Guys, that's it. You can throw that in off your kayak. We can drop those in the middle of the Pacific and track them all over. We don't need to put in a million dollar mooring. We don't need to get out there with a $15,000 vessel. We're talking to people in the Gulf of Mexico right now about air dropping them in the Gulf to track hurricanes, to track the loop currents, to create the kind of rifts that create spills on deep water horizon. If we can give those guys data to decrease the environmental risk, we can do the things that we're gonna do anyway much safer. Moving on, I learned a little bit about electronics. Uh-oh. I might have drank a little whiskey at the same time, and I was remembering back in the old days, my dad had some really cool weather stations. And they show you barometric pressure, temperature, time, some pretty amazing stuff. But you know what, living in Pleasure Point, all that stuff's kind of useless to me. Well, barometric pressure can be kind of useful. In the wintertime, summertime, it's basically useless in California. <laughs> So it gave me an idea, and I'm borrowing this quote. Dave Dennis helped me out with this quote. 
Checking your computer isn't natural for looking at the waves and tides. But what happens when we marry it all together and we can bring together a nautical station that then connects to Wi-Fi, can show you wave height, wave period, and tide, update all the time. You can program it up to any of the NOAA weather stations. The next time anyone bitches about taxes, just remember what they do for NOAA. The next time our president talks about getting ready to the Department of Commerce, just remember how much we like weather reports. <laughs> anyway, I digress. Connects to your Wi-Fi through a smartphone app. Updates every 30 minutes to every, any station you choose. We hand make them here in Santa Cruz. We have some out of Santa Cruz Redwood. David Dennis and Martine Stepout have made a few out of some of the killer wood that David was just talking about for the Ventana editions, which one of which is sitting back there. But it's bringing that complicated data back to something organic that we can all see. The key to all of this, whether it's the technology of the spotter, we got to do a lot of testing in Hawaii, which is really nice to go <laughs> swim out and take pictures of these. Not many waves, but it was great. But collaboration is the key from the most technologically advanced equipment to the most fundamental designs of analog equipment. Pleasure Point Design Multimedia helped us with all the designs in Pleasure Point. Ventana helped us with a lot of inspiration and design as well. Wet Feet Photography has helped us get some great imagery. But overall, collaboration is the key to any innovation that any of us have. We're not gonna do it alone, and you get better by working as a group. Thank you all very much.